And we are live. And we Hello, are live. Everybody. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Happy Friday. Who's here now? Debbie and Dara. Hi, Debbie and My girls Dara. are here. They're showing up. Yeah. They're showing up. So nice to see you. You know, I always hope that uh, we'll get somebody. And you guys haven't let us down yet. <laughs> There's always somebody. I'm here. If you wonder what in the world is she doing, you know, I'm just kind of passing a little time till we see it, get a few more here, so you know, everybody can see what's going on. Most as we can, you know, it usually takes like the first five minutes to get going. If you haven't noticed, oh yeah, this is Verdigris Builder Space. This is a new color of Gilders that came in, and it's like the dark green Verdigris, but it's it's almost got just a dark forest green color to it. And I'm liking it. And what I'm doing is I'm putting some on this chain. I got telling you guys about it on the group this morning. This stuff, this chain has just kind of gotten passed by. And I think if I just spend a little time with it, I hope I can buy more because I think people are going to want it once they realize these little cylinders can be tissue decoupaged. They can be colorized, torch, you name it, whatever. You know, so I think there's a lot of fun to be had with this this here chain. So I'm going to do a little bit of something, something with it. it. It won't be, I think this chain would be awesome. Swellagant. With the green patina swellagant. Oh yeah, baby. I like that idea. I don't know if you do, but I do. So what are you girls doing today? Are you feeling a little better? Um, Dara, Dara was a little bit under the weather for a while. Oh, no. She was still, she was still posting, but ah. she was a little under the weather for a bit. Hopefully she's feeling better. Are we stuck up, stuck or something on there? Nobody else is no. saying anything? No. Okay, we're just waiting then. Okay, that's fine. Well, sometimes we're not on time too, you know, so. Anyway, I was just playing around because I didn't get to yet with a little color on this. Oh, the patina's looking good too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this. And then maybe on top of that, Beans is here. Yeah. yeah, there she is. Beans! Hello, Beans. What's for supper, Beans? <laughs> what are you making, Paul, for supper? Beans is quite a cook. She's a little Italian mamacita cook. She is. Beans keeps saying, one day I'm going to come to your house and cook for you. How about that? Would that not be cool? Someday... Someday. I can't believe it's already been 10 years since Beans was here. She came to see me right before I opened the store. I gotta not bump this because Javi gets really mad in case you guys don't know that. She's really mad when I bump that. So, okay, so I put, do you see what I did see? It looks like, it looks like this to start with and I just ran my finger over it with a little bit of verdigris and a little bit of patina. Hey, Betty, and Colleen, and Deb, and Pat. Oh, wow, we're just, just lining up with people, which is what I like to see. Then I saw something here on my table, and I thought, hey, this bead's kind of cool. Have you guys ever see these beads? They're on the website. Let's see what we get. Yeah. Is they're acrylic, but they're just really uh, just a whole lot more than that. Really neat beads. And I thought we we're out of them, and I found it the other day. Oh no, we had like sixty of them left or something. I can't get any more. Um, these were in Mr. Bernie's back room, so that's where this came from. Anyway, hey, there's Dr. Jane West from the UK. Hey, how you doing, hey. Dr. Jane? We love our friends from the UK. Let me tell you what. Yes, we do. What part of the UK? England, Wales, Scotland? <laughs> what, what part? So, oh my goodness, look at Aaron's here. Oh my goodness, look at all these folks just coming on in here. Is Yanka's here? Yeah. Oh, Deb's coming for dinner too. Yeah. Now, Beans is a good cook, so. She must be. She shows us all the stuff she cooks on, exactly. on Facebook. I it's, see it. It's great. 
looks pretty good to I'm me. I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Javi likes to eat. So yeah, do so I. Do I. <laughs> so do I. That's why we get along most of the time, right? Yep. She likes to eat. So now over this, I think I'll just run a little bit of this antique gold and see what happens. Now, I don't want to cover this all up. Now, I did not put this two together. You know, this was how it came. We have it at the website. Not to try and sell it to you, because I almost wish I didn't have it for sale. <laughs> I almost wish I'd keep it all. Um, we have it 10 feet for eighteen ninety five, which is ridiculous. ridiculous. But I got it ridiculous, so I'm selling it ridiculous, okay? I don't, you know, go for it. So anyway, it's very inexpensive. Very nice chain. I would say from the look at it, it was, it's Hong Kong, maybe, 50, 1950. Um, brass cylinders, all connected up. So, um, but you know, we had that chain cell thing going on. So you could get it for as low as 13 something for 10 feet. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. So anyway, I'm just going to do a few little things with it. But what we're going to do today, guys, is, um, as I think I had mentioned, we're going to work a little bit with chain that we've made ourselves. Now this, you know, of course, this commercially made chain is not, it's vintage, quite vintage, probably about 60, 70 years old for that matter. But um, we're going to work with chain that we've put together ourselves from several things, metal beads or bone beads or wood beads. Okay, and we're going to see how they colorize. What's the best way to colorize them or some ID? Debbie feeds the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> she feeds the squirrels. Anyway, isn't that chain looking good? Now, who would have thought? Now, I'm thinking, like, this would be kind of meticulous, tough work. But <clears throat> if you took a little bit of, t just a little bit of tissue paper and you tissue decoupage, like, every few links... Oh my goodness, wouldn't that be cool? That would be amazingly yes. cool. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, Dr. Dr. Jane, how nuts we are over here? Yeah, this is a good group. <laughs> if you don't if you don't belong to Yay. the Visa Boutique's Creative Group at fa Facebook and you have time for it, yeah. we'd love to have you there. Anyone that hears this, we'd love to have you there. Um, it's free like this video, which is actually a class. And um, we have a ball. These girls settle down and get to work over there, let me tell you what. They, we was, we've been seeing some outrageously wonderful stuff here lately, if I do say so. So, Deb's feeling inspired. <laughs> oh, Jan's on here, I see Jan. I see Jan. Lisa say, Jan. Our buddy Jan from out in Arizona. Beans is from over by Philly. Dara's down in uh, West Virginia, Virginia. Let's see if I can remember y'all. Debbie's in Connecticut, I think. Connecticut. I can't remember everything. I'm trying to remember where my Betty's from. I should know where my Betty's from, my pal Betty. Betty. And I'm just, I'm getting, having a senior moment right now. I usually know, I know. where everybody's from. So <laughs> now I've put about four different colors on this. I've put <laughs> verdigris, free hugs. <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I got verdigris on here. I've got patina. I've got silver and I've got antique gold. Beautiful. And it's looking good. This is kind of the Bisu coloration process. And lately, as you guys know, I have rediscovered Gilder's Pace after a long hiatus. And I'm glad I came back to it because it's a far more awesome product than it ever was. And I'm using it to colorize a lot of things anymore. It's worth every dime. It goes a long way. And you need it. Start. You don't have to get the whole line up, though. Just I say get, like, patina and a couple of metallics, and you're good to start. So anyway, so I colorize this. I have to think a little bit about what more I want to do. Do I want to put some paint on here? I could do that. Um, I don't think I want to do perfect pearls, though, because this, I don't know if Gilder's Paste is going to take perfect pearls over top. I don't know. What is this perfectly dry? Maybe I just stress it a little bit. Could. It might. But
but I mean, this is looking good, man. So now how, you might say, well, okay, so Smarty Pants Brenda, how, how are you going to seal that? Well, my solution for chain sealing is generally this product right here, Swelling and Clear Sealant, <clears throat> because it's matte, it's so liquid, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like water. You can't see it going on. You could take this, I could put this like in this cup and I could take this stuff, pour it in there and just dunk it in there. Yeah. Dunk it in there. Like oh, you can. just dunk it in there? I you could, don't brush or it? I could paint it on or I could dunk it, either way. Same way as I would do the dioxides, those of you guys have ever done it. And um, from this line, swelling it. Um, but <clears throat> then to dry it, if you have one of those chain stay things, like mm -hmm. you put, this would be good hanging on it, or maybe a makeshift a little thing like on like um, like I do maybe? for beads, take a big plastic hopper, one of those big plastic baskets, and then attach it going across there. Let it hang. Let you know. Let it drip off and all that. It will be good. Um, it's fine if you want to brush it on, but the thing is you've always got that under layer under here that's laying on it and then it puddles and that's not what you want. So if you have a clothesline outside, I don't anymore. I kind of wish I did now. You can go hanging on a clothesline and let it blow in the wind. That's what, that's what Mel did years ago when they started out in 1928. They would black lacquer all their chain and then they would take it out and they would hang it in the hot California, Southern California sun, which is almost like the desert where he is. And then the sun would bake and it would become like baked enamel. You can get it off for a lot of money. Hmm. Yeah, and that's what they had to do. They had to seal it or anything. So anyway, so I did that on there. But what we're going to talk about mostly today is this beautiful bead chain that I made last night. Be beautiful if I say so myself and I do say so. Very pretty. Yeah, dip it. Nice. Dip it. <laughs> yeah. Dip it. Dip it good. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay, so anyway, so I made this bead chain last night. Bead chain. I sequenced it. Um, let's see. I think this had this one going on because they're the same. Yeah, yeah. So they're the same sequence. So anyway, I these beads are all on the Bisu Boutique's website. No kidding, they are. And I've got those little whirly twirly bead caps. I don't know if you guys have paid much attention to these before. I'm gonna just kind of hold this yeah. up so you can see. You see these little, they're like beehives? Yes. You guys ever gotten any of those? I'm about the only place you can find those. And I have that on good authority. There's a woman that um, did a bead haul type thing and she had gotten an order from us. I do not know her, but she's a very nice lady. And she did a video on the stuff in her box and she just was, hopping up and down saying she was so thrilled to find these because nobody else has them no kidding and I kind of believe that because I've been looking for you know a better price on them and a resource where I can maybe buy more at a time than I do and uh, I, I can't find them I can't find them I get them from a U.S. distributor I can't find them So, sometimes I, I, I plate them, too. Sometimes you'll see we have them at silver. I don't think we have them in anything but raw right now. Mm -hmm. But that's what you want for this is raw, okay? So, I started out with this chain colorizing. I didn't do anything to this one because I thought we'd do it together. But, see, I didn't even get finished with this, so we're going to have to do that. But, anyway, this one, see this one? It's a little uh, indented cube bead. And it is, I don't know what that is on there. Um, it was painted with um what did i put i did oh i did this what is this called perlite oh escarlata scarlet it's the one that we said looked kind of like a rose yes. gold okay we did it with prolex varnish the steel jacquard put a little bit in a cup poured a little bit of this in there just eyeballed it threw it in there and twisted you know spun it around a little bit with a you know, a little thing. And then it made a paint. And so then I painted. So I did that. Do you still have to seal that afterwards? Yes. And you might say, well, what's the matter with you? Why don't you paint the beads first? Because that might might be normally what you'd think to do. But you know what? Um, I thought about it before I even started making them. And I said, you know what? No, I'm going to put this chain together first because 
I will be, I'm the chain queen, she says, okay. <laughs> hey, Maureen. Um, so, I know, I said, no, I'm going to put it together first because I think I will get a better feeling for where I want to put the color if I put it together first. And as you can see, because this one's completely raw, there's nothing done to it. Um, we've got red brass on here. We've got dark, toasty patina brass. We've got bright, new brass like this. So we've got a bunch of different brasses. So, you know, we're going to have to try and cover it and get it look all uniform and, you know, going all together. So I started that, and I just got this far, so far with this. But I kind of I kind of like it. I'm kind of liking it. So I think I'm going to go along with that same kind of idea. I'm going to do silver gilders, verdigris. Patina, where are you? Patina, right here, Patina. Is and, that what you use for this one? Yeah, and antique gold. Okay. And you just kind of romance it. You know, you kind of just kind of, you know, paint it there and just kind of see how you're liking it, you know? So I'm going to pour a little bit of my swell again in here, which we do have the website, and I've got a whole much, bunch more coming in, too. But there's a little bit there now. So you can see... Oh, you know what? This was wrong. This is the ceiling. I don't want this yeah. now. Dirt. Well, it's not going to hurt anything to leave it out. It's not going to sit up. <clears throat> no, what I want is Perlex varnish. So I've got this thing here. Let's we'll use this. This will work. I get to talking and not thinking. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of coax a little bit of this out of here. And as you can see, it's it's very um, watery kind of. You know, it has it's not thick. It's a thin consistency. Yeah. So, anyhow. Pat says she has them. She's probably referring to the beehive. Beehive, beehive yeah. yeah. Everybody should have them, in my opinion. When I found those things, and I've, I've had them for a long time. I've had them for 15 years, at least. So, um, I've always been nuts about them. So, I'm just kind of, this is Pearl X, by the way. It's not perfect pearls. And last week we talked about the difference. So I'm flicking off about that much, which is probably about the equivalent of half of a teaspoon, maybe. It would be really good to like do a whole, take a day and do a whole series of experiments and then find out exactly how much you need for this, how much you need for that, and get it all written down, put it in a notebook. So if you use these things a lot, you might want to do that. And honestly, I might want to do that too because I should. I should be able to tell you a little bit more. But you know me. I'm that girl that eyeballs everything. Just, can you see how pretty? It's just really, there's this beautiful glow coming up. And can you see? If I put that Pearlex down there and that Pearlex varnish. See, these products are made to go together. Which when you, you know, you don't necessarily always have to use products made to go together. But when you can find them, it's... It's always nice, because then you know they're going to work. But look at that. Did you see that? How that, let me just kind of, can you see the beautiful color in that? It's kind of got a little bit of a glowy orange gold down in there, and the rest of it's coral. Yeah. I'm nuts about this. Beautiful wow. color. Beautiful color. So we're going to use some of it now. So where are we going to use it? Well... I think I want to put some on here. Well, first of all, I put it on here, so I put it on here, too. Now, it it, rem it will remind you a little bit of Lumiere paint uh, when you do this. It's got a little different texture and a little more mica in it. But it reminds you of Lumiere, and why is that same company makes it as well? So you might, if you got Lumiere paints, rather than do this, you might want to just try doing Lumiere paints. But it's it's like kind of watery, and then the, these are you know filigree beads to be to boot. So you're gonna, you know, it's gonna take you doing you know a couple little coats to get them. Okay, somebody had a I question. Know. Somebody had a question. What is? Why it? do you have to seal it if? If it's with a varnish, can you remind us again? Um, you might not have to. You might not have to. 
But then, if it's like, let's just say, okay, it remind this reminds me of Lumiere because of what's in it. So let's just say, when I do something with Lumiere and I paint it and it's you know set up and good, and what would I do? I would seal it. I would seal it. But this does have a varnish in it, and Lumiere doesn't. So if you wanted to do some little experiments, I'm just going to add a little hint of that on here. I love, like, pinks and greens together. Um, so, yeah, if you wanted to do some little experiments, you could, like, you know, make yourself a short chain of them, maybe make a bracelet out of it, because bracelet takes a lot of banging around, you know, and wear it around for a day and see if it wears off. But it can't hurt you to seal it, and sealing it is so simple, especially with swelling. Or you can take it and just do it with Krylon spray paint. Take it somewhere where you have some ventilation and spray two light misting coats, but you gotta get it everywhere on all the sides. You gotta get it everywhere. So, you know, if you don't mind doing that, then you're good. And then what you gotta do, if you use spray lacquer, you have to go through and kind of break up the links. Because it, what'll happen, it gets down in here, you know, into your links. And it might stiffen up a little bit. Not just normal. So you just have to break that up a little bit and you're good to go. You're, it's all fine, it's all good. So that is why I would probably do it. Now another way, I don't know, like if it was on a brooch or something, I might not because a brooch doesn't take any banging around. I'm going to pull this on for first on this one. Um, you know, we're wearing it. I think some things you just have to think about it. Some things are no brainers. Oh, yes, I'm going to seal this. Like stuff with perfect pearls on it, you have to because that, that embossing ink, it will get on there and kind of stay on there and it stays a little tacky if you don't seal it. You seal it and you're good. You're fine. So that's that's kind of the big why thing. So you can see I'm getting a little of this green on here. The melon beads are taking the color really well. The filigrees are really bumpy so they're not performing quite as nicely for me as I might like. But eh, it's alright. It's okay. So now I just have to figure out what I want to put on the middle one. And I think, and I did patina on here. So I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do antique gold because it's antique gold already. So what am I going to do? Well, I think I'm going to paint it a little bit. I think I'm going to paint it a little bit. That might be pretty. I just love this look. It's very, very old world, old Czech, Niger Brothers type look. And that always trips my trigger. Any time that I can try to see what I can do to duplicate that look, I'm going to do it. You know, I'd like to do maybe some time like a two-day class or just maybe only one day on that look and all the things that you can do to achieve it because we really have not covered everything in the videos, you know, about that. And I know a lot of you guys love that look too. And like, did you see on the group today how Milan... From, I think she's from Sweden, how she insisted she had to make Haskell-type pearls, the dark gray ones, because they're hard to find, number one, and they're not cheap. So she thought maybe she could do it with epoxy sculpt. She didn't do half bad. Did you see that? No, she didn't nice. do half bad. I, that was a lot of work, though. You know, you have to get your head around that, but then they, she didn't do half bad at all. So, I mean, there's just so many things you can do. Like, you look at those old pieces, those old heavy-duty check pieces. Most of them are the Niger Brothers pieces. And you think, like, where am I going to get those beads? You know, well, they're not easy to find. I've had some in my time. Sometimes you'll see some Etsy sellers with them. But nobody has a lot of them, let me tell you what. It's because they're not out there anymore. You know, people have either got them stashed, put away, they've made into jewelry already, or whatever. There's just not a lot of them, so, and they probably never really were. And all those beads were made in what's called now Czech Republic in the Jablons region. And that's where all the good glass from Czech Republic comes, is from the Jablons region. But um, I think I told you the story before I read it. Um, the Niger brother is so talented. Oh my goodness! Just what, what beautiful talent they had. 
And um, they lived in the Jablons region, region, of course, and they started making their jewelry. It's made by hands and, and hand. And I think they started like in the 20s and went up into the wartime. Well, Germany made some kind of a treaty with uh, Czechoslovakia or something. I don't know. I don't know all the details, but anyways. Um, Czechoslovakia had to give up the Jablons region. They had to forfeit that region to kind of keep them at bay. So they did. Well, they went in there and they rounded them up, all the Jewish people, and the, the brothers perished. And it just makes me want to ball because what a talent they had. What a talent. But we can still find their jewelry because they're really rather prolific and they sold a lot of it, you know, they imported to the United States and you'll find it. And um, anyway, but that region, that's where all the good glass comes from the, to this day. The place where I'm direct importing from, it's in Giblons. Preciosa, I think, is from there too. So Preciosa is going to take over what Swarovski once had because Swarovski doesn't want to sell to the little guy anymore. So you can't get it unless you're a manufacturer. I can't get it. Not as a distributor. I have to be a manufacturer to get it. I said to Mel, I said, are you going to sign the paperwork so that you can get it? Because he's a manufacturer, of course. He goes, I don't care. He said, I got enough vintage Swarovski here to last me the rest of my life. I don't care. <laughs> So, there you go on that one. So, I've got a good bit of stuff on here now. Good bit of color. I've got the peachy color. I've got the dark verdigris. I've got the um, patina. I've got the rose gold, and I'm loving it. And it's subtle. Like, I don't know that uh, this is really picking up how, because it's not dark, you know, but it's beautiful. And... I'm just thinking now, I had this one from last week. I did a little bit more to it. Remember when we did this? I said, mm -hmm. what would this look like? Well, it's not bad with that. It might need a little bit more of this, though, huh? Well, if we put a little bit on it, we can. It hasn't been sealed. We can do that. Why don't we do it? Maybe I'll set these aside together, and that's what I will do. So I just picked some, you know, little random high places to put it. This has got all kinds of stuff on it. It's got the paints, and it's got uh, the perfect pearls on it. It's got uh, gilder's paste, all kinds of stuff. So it has to be sealed. I think I'll get it on these roses a little bit. But this is very luminous looking paint. Very beautiful. You're going to want to try this. But like I said, if you have the Lumiere paints already, you might be just fine with that. Anne says, I remember back in the old days when we only had rub and buff. <laughs> yeah, and it stunk terrible, remember? <laughs> stunk terrible. Really? I, was always, I, used, I used to use it on Palmer clay a lot. And it, it was great. I mean, it worked great, and it's very permanent, stayed on, especially because Palmer clay, the clays are a little bit porous, you know. So it, it stayed on like it's... The pieces I have that I put it on is still on there to this day, but it was very smelly. And to be honest with you, um, when they were first doing Gilder's Pace, like uh, 15 years ago or something, I don't know, something like that. Um, when they were first doing it, um, it was a little bit smelly too. But it, it still is. I mean, you don't want to like hold the can up and like... <laughs> with it that would be that would not be good but i mean it does not have the odor situation at all that it used to not at all so anyway so here we go with it yeah that's a good match it's a pretty good match yeah, i'll just kind of pull this one yeah taint bad what do you think i think i'll leave it alone and seal it i think <laughs> i'm done and robbie came today and he changed the drill bit on my drill press like can I do that? Yes. <laughs> I just don't do it often, so then I don't trust myself. And he also filled all my um, torches. I have torches. I have four torches, and he filled them all with fuel, so they're all gassed up now. And um, do I know how to do that? Yeah, I even have a video. This is what's I even have a video to show you how to do it. But if I can get Robbie to do it, Go for it, Robbie, you do it. 
So he came up today. He was off today. He came up to see Hubby and, and he says, Hey, Aunt Brenda, I'm ready to change your drill bit and do your torches. I says, Go for it, Rob. <laughs> so he did. So anyway, let's just do this one more together so that it's all complete. And we'll just kind of go over this. So what did I do here? Okay, I see. What I think I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and do the patina on this and do mm -hmm. the verdigris on this. So that I can kind of set up a little bit first before I go putting paint over it. That brace, yes, it would, Maureen. It would be. In fact, I laid rhinestone rondelles out to put on it, and then I didn't. Now this for a bracelet, this is a little long for a bracelet. I probably would have stopped it also. And then not only that, you know, when you make something like this and it's got long links, which this does, it's not the best for a bracelet. But if you did shorter links and rise and run, it would be beautiful. Absolutely. Or do it on some soft flex or, you know, some of that stuff that has the wire base. But it's soft, you know. And you could just string it on. If you want it, instead of doing the wire. You know me, I always do the wire thing. But, um, because that's how it was. A lot of the old tech jewelry, but that's how it was made, you know? So I kind of like that look. But, um, yeah, but, you know, just doing it on a string probably would take a whole lot less time. For sure. How many bead stringers do we have here that like to use string to bead? Jan, if Jan's still here. She's one. I know that for sure. Maureen, you probably are too. I, I have never done a lot of bead stringing in my life. I, I mean, I have done. I don't know. How, I know how. I just don't for some reason. I just so once I discovered wire for doing this kind of thing, I'm like I was hooked, and that's what I always did. But it does sometimes have its limitations. You know, so there are times you definitely, you definitely want to do the wire. Anybody have any questions? Yes, Colleen, she did a beautiful job recreating. When she said she was going to do that, I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. You know, I don't want to discourage anybody, but I'm like, oh man, that's going to be a lot of work. She seemed to enjoy herself. She did a good job. I don't know what she did to keep the holes open. I saw that she had them pinned onto something. You would not do that. You know, if it's not cured yet, you would not do that because it will adhere, it will adhere to the metal. She must have done something else. She probably else. waited until the last moment when it's um, right to, about to be, like, you know, like, dry. Uh -huh. That would be the best time and to do And she it. poked it open again. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I know Sharon said, Sharon um, Howard said... Um, she likes to take the little, you know, the little straw they give you, like at Starbucks or something. You use it as yes. a stir, but it's also straw. Small hole. Yeah. She says she macrames with beads off. Yes, you do, Maureen. It's beautiful too. You do a great job. That is not a skill that I have down real well. It just, I don't know. I just always prefer to do other things with that kind of stuff. Cause I've let. A lot of the, you know, the cocoa wood beads that we sell and the big wool, wool, wooden spool beads, those are all from the 60s, and they were for macrame, you know. But I like to make tassels and stack them. So everybody's different, you know. Everybody has their own thing going on, you know. So anyway, so I've got these two done, and I think I want to let them sit, and then I'll do the patina to this, and the rest gets painted, and then... Would be sure we got it all matched up because these are sequenced the same way. So there it is. Goes. Hi, Catherine. Yeah, gonna, we'll get it. Yeah, Catherine. Oh, Catherine. hey, Catherine. How you doing? How are they doing? How you doing? So we got this. Now, oh, that was dumb. See, did you see what I did? I took vertigree thing, put my finger right in there. It didn't hurt it. It's fine. I gotta wipe that off. So that was not too smart. It was not too smart because you don't want to corrupt it, right? No. It comes off real easy, too. If you don't let it dry, see how easy it is? I just got a wet wipe here. It comes right off. It's, it's good, you know. Good stuff. Works out. Yeah, I love this stuff. I, I, I'm glad I let it go when I did because it just was not working out for me. 
But then they reformulated it, another company bought it. Baroque Art was the name of the company that made it and, and developed it first. I don't even know if they're still in business, but uh, he sold it to these people now, and they've got these that nice packaging, and they give you little sticks, you know, to get in there and work with it, push it up if you need to. Got a whole page of directions on the back, ideas of what you can do. It's so much better. Oh my goodness. She said she's doing great. Doing great. That's good. That's great. Okay. What do you guys think so far? Does it have that old world look? I think it does. This is so fun. I like to just sit at night and put these beads. Now, I wrapped all these pieces. This was not head pins. I took, cut wire to size, like Javi does sometimes. Yep. And then I went and I measured carefully. So I had, like, similar size loops and stuff. I didn't want to be real wonky. Like, I'm in love with the black gilders paste, believe it or not. What do you black like about gilders. it, Maureen? I've not done a lot with black yet. Tell us about it. Why do you love the black so much? There's black gilders paste? Yeah, we carry it. No way. We might be out of it right now. I just ordered whole mess this morning, so they'll be here in a few days. But anyway, what do you like about black gilders paste? I've not tried it yet. Does it have really good coverage? You know, I know the silver does. Silver has, oh, silver's very, very easy work. I don't know. I think it yeah. has to do with the colors that they put in it, <coughs> the, whatever they have to put in it to colorize it. So some of them are very, very oily-like, and they you know, work really good. They come out of the jar really quick, and others don't. Patina's somewhere in between. It always has been. The silver's slick. I like silver. The gold's not bad either. Hey, Vicky, how you doing? Vicky! How you doing, Vicky? Nice to see you today. Yeah. This might be at your rally. I know you like to do mixed media stuff. So you guys know about the, the, the class. It's going to be in two weeks on Friday. We're going to try really hard to still have video, live video, at on time. But the class is going to go from like... 10 a.m. to 2.30 ish, something like that, with a little break for lunch. And we're going to work on paper and put in mounts all day and a little epoxy sculpt stuff too. I've got really a bunch of stuff I want to do. So um, I will have samples made in a couple of days so you can see more about it if you're kind of on the fence. Yes, it's live, Des Jessica. It's live. it's live. This one's live. Um, so. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to have that. So you get a day. We're going to have a day in class all day. And it's 30 bucks for everybody. So Javi's got the link up if you think, you know, you want to do it. It's really kind of an extension of the May workshop. But it's not something we did in the May workshop. It's just kind of more of that kind of thing. You know? So if you liked all the paper and all the clay and all that, that kind of stuff... Um, you might want to do this. So we're going to have like a play day. It's going to be a blast. Hi, Chris. And the $30 is so I can pay Javi. <laughs> <laughs> Javi don't work free. Did you guys know that? Dang. No. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> no, it's, you know, just to take care of my being away from my desk all day, basically. But um, I will make that sacrifice joyfully to spend a day with you. That's yeah. for sure. So we'll have a little day class and that'll be fine. So yeah, if you want to join, you can sign up for the classes in the classes and muses section. She yeah. just put it up. It's, it's right there for you. But if you uh, want to wait, you know, for a couple of days or whatever, I mean, you got two weeks. I'll take, I'll take students up until the day before, you know that. Um, but it's going to be the same format. You know, you'll get put into the classroom and, and uh, we'll have a couple of weeks together in there and, and you know, just show stuff we're doing, ask It'll questions and all that. <laughs> yes, we're going to have a blast. So you get two, about two weeks of the classroom, too, with it. 
And um, so you guys that are in the old classroom, I, I decided to let everybody from the May class just stay in there for now in case, you know, they want to share something, whatever. And it hasn't been real busy in there, but I just left it go like that. It's fine. Um, next week, if I'm going to start taking people out, you know, unless you want to take the class, then, then you know, I'll leave you in, you know. But anyway. And then what we'll do, it's the same format we always do. Everybody comes and sees the URL to go to the YouTube thing. And you go to YouTube, to the class, and then we talk about it in the video classroom, in the Facebook classroom later. And the fun goes on. The beat goes on. Yep. Okay, so this is pretty close. Pretty close. What do you think? Me likey, me likey. I like it. Hi, how you doing, Chris? She says hi to Javi. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I, I remember their, her name. Hi, Chris. <laughs> yeah, it's been for remember. a while. You know, people have different names for their YouTube account, and mm -hmm. sometimes they can't remember who they are, and I feel bad. I was waiting for them. Probably know. You know, anyway. Yeah, waiting for the announcement. Yeah, we, we, we got it ready today. So, yeah, if you want to go sign up, you can. And, uh... Of course, you can't use your coupons on it, you know, the classes, but, um, of course, there's no shipping or nothing, too, because you're not going to be, you know. And I'm not having a kit for it, but what I did is I put links up. I put a list of all the stuff that you might want to collect from the stuff you have, because I figure most people would have it. Most people will. Yeah, I love the colors, too, Lisa. I always go for these colors. I always go for these colors. But anyway, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so what was I saying? I don't remember. Senior moment. Can't remember. Yeah, the oh, the list. The list is there, the stuff you need to gather. And if you need some things, don't have them, and you want to buy them from us, that would be great. The sooner you get your order in on that stuff, the better. But Jordan will give it uh, priority, you know, yeah. anybody in the class so that you got your stuff on time. Um, and you can, you know, buy it if you want. But I don't have a... I don't have a kit for this one. I just figured most of it you'd have. I have a few things coming in in case you don't have. I have some new papers coming in and stuff like that. But um, basically, you've probably got most of it. So you can go look at that listing and see. You know, if you're out of something, you need anything. But I bet most of you won't. Probably won't. Hey, Chris. It is pretty, isn't it, Catherine? <laughs> I like it, too. So, okay, so this is basically, these are all beads that we have on the website in the metal beads section. And guess what? The metal beads are oh, all yeah. on sale. They're on sale. Along with the chain and all the semi-precious. And that's all stuff that you can make in here to um, chains. Like, um, I have a friend who has a beautiful shop out in California, and she loves to make sequence chain with a little lower end, um, semi-precious and brass and, you know, little antiquity stuff. And it's beautiful stuff. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. But you could do that too. Oh, yes, you could. So here's how, right? Wasn't too much of a stretch. You guys already knew. I know you did. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to set this aside for now because we're going to work on something else. Okay, now I said we're going to talk about bone beads and stuff. We haven't talked about bone beads for a while, although I have a huge stash of them. We haven't talked about them for a while. And I think in one of my videos I mentioned something about colorizing bone beads. Yep. But we didn't do it with Gilder's Paste or anything like this. Mm -hmm. So I made a little bit of um, kind of sort of sequenced chin. Let's see. Get it going the right way. Yeah, it goes this way. So this is um, this is some of the metal from our website. This is our our bone beads from the website. The best way to get the best variety of bone beads is to buy two packages of them. This is what people are telling me. So that's what I did. I got two packages out to try that. And they're right. You know, two packages is best, but they don't cost very much. So that's kind of nice. These come from India. I get them from a fellow by the name of Robin. 
and he and his family uh, have a nice little business where they do the sari ribbon and they do the the um, bone beads and a bunch of other things, paper things too. Hey Deb, Deborah's here. Yeah, I know. Dara likes to. She likes to sew curves and Kool Aid, and it comes out pretty good too. Yeah. Let me tell you what, I like it. But anyway, so I made this um, this chain, and it's not perfectly sequenced, but it's the same length. It comes out the same. So maybe tonight, after I make my supper, because John's on afternoon, I'm kind of alone here. Um, after I have my supper, I'm going to come back and figure out what I want to do for a focal. These are kind of long. Let's see how long, how long are they. I would say about 16 inches each, so you'd be looking at, this is long, maybe a little too long. I might have to take a little bit off the back because it's like 32 inches. So, so, so till I put a pendant on that, it's to be hanging down in Hawaii, you know what I mean? It's going to be, it's gonna be all the way out to the moon, so it's too, too long, too yeah. long, at least for me, I'm short. So I will probably take, a, no, maybe this much off in the back, and then it'll be about right. But anyhow, let's talk about colorizing bone beads. Now, my favorite way to do that, hey, thanks, Colleen. No, it's not acrylic bone. It's the real deal. It's made from water buffalo that died. <laughs> yeah, they're not alive. They didn't kill them for their bones. They just, you know, they don't do that in India. So anyway, but it's organic material. Anyway, um, it's water buffalo, so hopefully it doesn't gross anybody out, but anyway, um, we eat meat, so what's the difference if we make beads from the bones, right? That's what I think. If you don't eat meat and you're vegan, then it might be kind of hard for you. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, so anyways, um, my favorite way, I started to say, my favorite way to colorize bone beads is simply to soak them in very strong tea overnight. Very strong tea. So what you're looking at here, let me get my little pointer out. You see this one, and this one here, and this one, and this one, and this one. That's all bone beads soaked in tea. I'm telling you, it's easy. Simple, simple, simple. But what's so cool is you can add a little color over that still. Now these are the bone beads, these are the bleached out bone beads. This is what they look like when Robin sends them to me and I get them. Off the DHL truck. He always sends a DHL. So anyway, so this is, you know, this is the way he sends them to you. This is the way you get them in the back. So that's up to you, you know, whatever, you know, if you want to leave them white, they look pretty spiffy that way, too. Or you want to just put a little blush of color. You could use um, the um, embossing ink with Perfect Pearls on these, too. That could be a very pretty look. I'm not going to do it on here because I want to go for an earthy look with this. It won't. I don't think it's my the look I want to go for on here. But, I mean, you could totally do it. Totally. You'll have to seal that. But you just paint swell again on at the end, and I'm going to show you how in a little bit. But anyway, so this one, I thought maybe I'd add a little color to these bone beads to kind of coordinate with the rest. Wouldn't have to, but I thought I would. And oh, you know what? I kind of bounced off this. Remember when I did the horse? I made two of these, and I, I have one that I made, and some of this one's sitting here, and I thought... Could you use Prolex on it? Well, you have to put something down to make it stick, and that would be um, the bossing ink. And that can work. They tell you no, but it can. I would say the best thing to do is mix in a little Prolex varnish and put it on if you like that. But it will have a different consistency. So I thought maybe this would kind of look good on with this. But I'll have to take a little bit off. I don't know. I might do it, I might not. But this is sitting here made, and I should make something out of it. I keep saying I'm going to sell jewelry on my website. I've got a whole pile of it here, and I'm doing it. The other day, I cleaned out all this end of the office, and I've got myself now. I've got my little station to take pictures by a beautiful sunny window, just the right sun. 
And I have no excuses now, do I, Harvey? No. No, no, not. Okay, so anyway, let's do a little colorization. So on these, I think I want to do patina first. Now, these are my choice of colors. You can put other, you know, anything you want. You know, on it, you could put. I'm gonna do patina first on them. So I'm gonna start up here and just, I'm gonna go very lightly, just a little. See, did you see that's just almost like a blush? See, let me hold it out. Maybe you put it on makeup. <laughs> see, it's just kind of a blush. It's not a lot. In fact, I put a little bit more in the back. Just a blush. All right. So I'm gonna do it on the other side too. Just a blush, just a little bit, a little bit. This is so easy, guys, and it just is so peaceful, and you get this immediate gratification thing, and that's just wonderful. I like it. So, and I'm gonna go up to this longer one. Just getting a little color on there. Maybe a little bit more. But I'm gonna, it's gonna be, I'm gonna put several colors onto it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for saying that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we all have to struggle with our confidence as jewelry makers from time to time. And because I don't make jewelry for a living anymore, I'm not making it every day. Um, I just kind of lost a little bit of mine. And so sometimes I think, oh yeah, that's good, but you know, it shouldn't be that way. Don't don't beat up on yourself that way. Your stuff is way better than you think. I tell you, I don't have too many pieces that I say, okay, I'll sell this that don't get bought. You know, and I don't give my jewelry away either. I don't charge a ton for it, but I don't give it away either. So. You know, and that's the biggest affirmation you have that you did a good job. Somebody bought it. Somebody bought it, and they're going to wear it or give it to somebody for a gift. And, I mean, it's just it's a little bit of a rush that that gives you, I think. That somebody would take their hard-earned money and give it to you for your jewelry. Yes. Because we know that for most of us, money doesn't come easy right now, especially... A lot of us are paying a lot more for gas than we used to, and a lot more for groceries, and you know. So when somebody buys your stuff, that's pretty special. But I hear the ones that are doing the shows are doing pretty good. I know Deborah Long said she was. I know she's still on here, but I don't know. She might be still on here. She might be still on. I know some kind of just show up for a little bit, which is fine too. Yep. That's by the true. way. We're Thank happy you for showing for up, guys. Yeah, we're happy. Oh, Robbie. Oh. <laughs> Robbie came over here and he stuck his face and he was staring at me off to the side. And I was like, oh, Rob. Cheeky. <laughs> so I looked up. I just cut, you know how you get that feeling like there's something. Yeah, there's there. something. Watching so you. I looked over there. Here's Rob. Oh, it's freaking out. You know, I'm an old lady, Rob. You might give me a heart attack. <laughs> oh, man. You want to give yeah, I thought it was the cat trying to get into the, you know, the yeah. door. You know, like you, you the no, cat usually does. No, Robbie Bobby Boo. <laughs> Robbie Bobby Boo. So anyway, so I'm just kind of getting this on some of the metal to it, accordingly. And I'm not going to just leave it like that because it's kind of really aqua. And I, that's not what I want. I want something a little richer. Oh, there's Deborah. Yeah, I was saying uh, that uh, you had said you'd had some pretty good shows out there. Too. And I've heard that from other people, too. Yeah. Uh, they're doing good. There's people want to get out for the day and go by. Why people, people enjoy handmade things. Yeah, why so not why buy? Why should they not buy shop. yours, you know? Shop buying. Buying shop. So. <laughs> Catherine says hi. Hi. <laughs> Catherine says hi. <laughs> so does Lisa. We Maybe. should have sent <laughs> Rob home with you, too, along with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, BT. <laughs> Rob used to do the videos. <laughs> yeah, he the did. <laughs> Javi took those over a long time ago. I know. Because <laughs> Robbie had to go get a real job. <laughs> oh, what? This is a what real a, job. That what is a real job. You guys don't, support don't us. Kid your, don't kid yourself. This, we're not just playing arts and crafts over here. No way. 
But no. Yeah, I was just saying that to be sure. Learn silly. to have a I think that's when Robbie went to machine school or something. Oh, Beansy says earrings are a good seller. Yeah. I'm finding. Yeah. She's yeah. Finding, yeah. How are your earrings doing, Deborah? I know you make uh, your earrings with the <laughs> the little, uh, all that vintage thing that Sizzix has. You know, you put those patterns on. I used to sell those. Why? I can't remember what they call them now. I'm, oh, the patterns on them. Um, yeah, they're like a little folder, and you put you put the lightweight brass in it. Okay. No, no heavier than twenty four gauge, which is that's the weight of brass stamp. I think I remember you doing that. And you stick it in there, and then you put it in the Sizzix. Means you go <laughs> over and, and, and presses it in. It's like it's like a little fake rolling mill is what so, those are. You know. Is that what they do for paper then? Well, I suppose you could, yeah, but that makes uh, sense. we do it for jewelry, yeah. the, and those those little folders are meant to do it on the metal. Oh, you know, thanks, it's, it's like a, it's 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 like a, a little dumbed down. Oh, um, hi, Michelle. Rolling mill. Oh, they work. Lisa, have you a real job? Yeah. Debbie her says hi, Rob. <laughs> her real job is putting up with me. What? And I have to put up with her too. Don't. That's don't, true. Don't bore <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say anymore. I get myself in real trouble. But I love these kids. I had a brain <laughs> problem there that was just like what? So I'm just doing a little bit of silver, just a glint. I'm On not the sure. Bone? I, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I love it, but anyway. I kind of need like a more pop of color to it me. Needs a I feel bit. like. I don't know. Is it just me? Yeah, the go the the silver kind of dulled it down. Yeah, but I gotta continue because I want it to match. The so, rockster. <laughs> so I think maybe gold. Maybe yeah, that's what I was thinking. Gold. <laughs> so I was thinking it needs like a little pop of color, like a little yeah, bright. Yeah, some or... little more than I got. Well, I got do you have tin. gold? I thought you had gold over here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna do gold next. I just gotta clean my finger off. It's right oh. here. It's right. Here. I'm blind, so. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you guys remember how I took that, I got a can of what they called Iris Blue Gilder's Paste, and it was really runny, weird for Gilder's Paste. But really? anyway, uh, it's, it, it set up then, and it came out <laughs> of the can pretty good. So I had made this piece, you know, for, um, I make a bracelet. This is epoxy sculpt, and I haven't finished it yet. But anyway, so I put it all over this, and it was like dark indigo blue. It was really dark. Mm -hmm. So I let it dry, and then I scrubbed it back. You know, recent, you know, I, you know, just used a steel wool and scrubbed it back, oh. distressed it, <clears throat> and then I put a little bit of peach in here, a little bit, and then I let it dry, and then I used this stuff to seal it, because this is a sealant too. You can use this to seal as well, and what? it just <laughs> kind of. It just gave it a whole another dimensional look to it. You know, it looks like denim. Yeah, I thought so too. Like Especially the clothes. Yeah. So I'll have to finish that someday. Okay, so we're going to try a little bit Dara of Dara said here. copper gilders. Yeah, copper would be good on this. Yeah, that's true. I don't have any. Mm -hmm. I think we're even out. I ordered some. But I agree, copper would be excellent. Is gilders better? for this and Prolex? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have to... See, this is what I did, Catherine. If you go back to the beginning later on, you know, when you have some time to look at I made a paint out of it. Now, this might be setting up. It looks like it's kind of setting up. Really? A little bit, yeah. So, I'm going to have to go ahead and use it pretty quick. Hmm. But anyways... So it's pretty fast. I thought it was going to take a while. Yeah, copper would be great. I might have to go out later and see if I've got some. be nice some. on pearls. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I went there. What? It would be nice on pearls? That would be nice on pearls. Yeah, we, we had a video on that a long time ago. Remember that? Where we took the, the pearl bracelet and we put the tissue deck card on it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, I need to go back with some copper. Dara is perfect. It looks like denim. Vision. Jessica said, yes. I mean, this is okay. I mean, is Rob setting fine. things on fire? Question. Oh, is Rob <laughs> setting things on fire? She remembers <laughs> No, that. he's sitting there. In fact, I thought about it earlier. 
Who said, could Catherine say that? <laughs> yeah, he was down there loading my, my torches for me with fuel <laughs> so I could torch. Thought about it. Yeah, we had that famous picture. If you're newer to us, you haven't seen it. I'll have to post a link. What is it? That's Rob. Is Rob. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's before you guys were dating or not. Yeah, that was way before my time. <laughs> Rob was but a boy. I like that picture, though. It's kind of cool. It is cool. I'm going to be honest. That's an awesome Yeah, picture. I'm going to get some copper. But before I do that, I got a little bit of this paint I got to use up. So I think I will. I think I will. I think I will. You could probably remove some of that real quick if you use the baby wipes. I don't know. I'll try it. No, forget it. <laughs> no, it's too porous. It sucked it right up. That's it. Okay, let me put a little bit of this here on here somewhere. Dara says, now I need to make a chain with bone beads. Yeah, yes. you do. Yeah, you do. Let's see it, it the Dara way. I've seen people dye them. I've seen people paint them. Dara's, Do she, something. <laughs> Dara had this really cool idea. She says, hey, what if I put it in Kool-Aid? That well, is I, an awesome. Why not? So she did. <laughs> it was. It was awesome. Now we need another. Just, just need to do something there. a little different sometime. Maybe food color. <laughs> so I'm putting a little peachy in here with it. But you can't see it that good. To be honest. So yeah, it's going to need some copper. I have to go out there and see if I have some. If not, I'll probably have to wait. You know what? I probably have some paint pens. You know, paint pens work too. Paint yeah. pens are fine. You don't have to do it with this stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, paint pens are great. <laughs> no problem. You can do that. <laughs> you want, what's so you funny? Want me, you want me to show the picture on there? What's he doing? <laughs> oh, he found it. This is Rob. Anybody remember that picture? <laughs> I was probably about 18 when I did that. <laughs> really? Yeah. How old were you when you came here, Robbie? Well, I came sometime in 2010, I think. Yeah. That would have been 19. 20, 19, yeah, 19. yeah somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, they came up one night. Andrew and Rob came up to visit with me one night. Because we really had done one visiting for a while. And, and uh... I was sitting there with me, and he was saying, yeah, and you're in you could do this, and you could do this, and you could do this. And I was like, I said, you know what, Robbie, why don't you come work for me? He goes, okay. <laughs> so I did. And he was homeschooled, so he was able to do that. <laughs> oh, you're, you know what? Maybe I came before that then if I was still, was I still in school when I came to work for you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I might but been, you were homeschooled, so it didn't feel like you were still in school. That's what I was saying. Maybe I was younger. Maybe it was even earlier than that then. I, mean, I forgot. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Why, uh, what kind of paint is that? It's the... Yeah, this is the paint that I made from these two items. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was pointing at so them. She's quietly. <laughs> this is Pearl X. Not Perfect Pearls, Pearl X. And this is Pearl X Orange. We have them both on the website. What happens if you do mix this with Perfect Pearls? It works. It works the same? Or not, you know, not really? It, Perfect Pearls has that resin binder in it. That's the big difference between Perfect Pearls and Pearl X. Okay, so Pearl X does not itself, have that resin. No, there. and I just kind of think, you know, it's the same company. They're made to go together. So why don't we just do that since we have yeah, it? Yeah, that makes That's sense. That's kind of my feeling there. <laughs> yeah. But you could do it, you know, if you want. You could always create paint with per Perfect Pearls and um, the Swellicant uh, clear matte finish. Yeah, somebody said that too. In fact, I think Chrissy Friesen told me that one time. Really? You make a paint on it. Yeah, just put it in there and it'll fit. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a, there's a way. You take sell the Swellicant clear sealant, this stuff, and you mix some uh, Perlax or whatever into this, uh -huh. like I did the varnish. And this, you do, if you do that, and you make a color of it, you paint it on something, you do not have to seal it. You don't have to. This, um, you might not have to either. But I'm just not sure. I know for a fact well, they don't Well, they're both water-based. So. Yeah, but they're still, they're not the same. They're not the same? No, no. Got it. Not the same products. So. No, of course not. Anyway, so it doesn't tell you what's in it. But it's water-based and eco <laughs> You know what it is? It's Sculpt Nouveau is what it is. That's the company that makes it. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that. But the thing about it is they make so many different things. 
and a lot of the things that they make are horribly toxic. Oh. And I had thought for some time, you know, I'd like to get that and rebottle it, you know, do what Christy did before she did it. And then when I saw that she'd done it, I was thrilled because I really did not want to do that. But I thought that's that's what you want. That's that's, that's the stuff. So true. That's the bomb. You know? Colleen says now that chain has such a different vibe since you colorized yeah, it. Yeah, put a little color with it. That and is then like, true. And like uh, Dara said, um, now you know, the copper might be a little cool. You know, just let this set up real good. And before I seal it, go ahead and put just glints, just a little dash. You know, on your finger, just a little dash here little and there. Dots here. And then. You know, but yeah, I wish you could see this in person because it, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a lot better in person. But I'm I'm trying to use this stuff up because I hate to waste, you know, and it's got places that it could take it, so that would be great to do that. These are check beads here. These are pumpkin beads, and you can't really yeah. see the color of them so good because I got stuff on them. But we'll have them on the website next week. I still have beads from my bead hole because my big shipment came in last week and I'm probably not going to be able to do another one for a little while. So as I keep trying to get enough money ahead, you know, to do a, a 1928 order. Maybe I just have to do a really small one, but I haven't done one for a while. I just, it's all. Oh, we never talked about the, the sale for them. For this oh, week. the chain sale? Oh. Yeah. Well, I did tell them, chain sale. The chain sale. Um, we're... Okay, I did tell them that. Cha all the chain and all the metal beads and all the semi-precious pearls. Not pearls. Semi-precious st stones and, and beads and all that. Cabs, everything. It's 30% um, off with only a $35 order. And that's $35 for chain, metal beads, or semi-precious semi-precious which is not hard to do you know but you have to have it you know it can't be 35 across the board for everything it has to be for those products so you do that then it'll take 30 percent off that's a lot of money guys i mean this is the time if you want to get some chain and stock up um this is the time to do it. i know some people have been waiting for the uh, bead and link chain which has been i've had that forever and you know it's a favorite, favorite of mine, too. I'm trying to find who makes it because the supplier I've bought it from for years, which is a U.S. distributor, they're so unreliable now. They'll order it for me. I don't get it for months. And I'm just not too happy. You know? I'm just not too happy. If you're not going to be able to get something on, you just say so. It was the same thing. They had all the ball and head pins, and they had really nice ones. I waited for over a year to get theirs till finally I just said, okay, I'm done. I'm going to source them myself, and I did, and I'm happy I did, because I got them a lot less, and I could sell them a lot less, so that's nice. Oh, and the code for the chain sale is chain sell. Chain sell. She <laughs> so put, put that in the she coupon put on code. There. And I did say it was only going to be Thursday and Friday, because usually, if I'm going to put the chain on sale, there's like a real run on it. You know, everybody runs over and gets it, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to you know, be able to handle that. But that has not happened. Which is okay, I understand. It's not everybody's week to buy. That's fine, you know. But what it means is I'm going to go ahead and leave it go all weekend. So you still got plenty of time if you want to have a look. So Oh, we got some idiot on here. Oh, you saw it, didn't you, Abby? Yep. We got trolls. Trolls are back. Hold on, guys. We're getting rid of She's getting rid of them. Okay. I don't know why they have to do that. We don't care about their stuff. No one's going to do their stuff. No one cares. It's like vandalism is what it is. Don't you think? I don't know what happened. Yeah. Oh, trolls come on here every so often. They start putting naked game, very cool. Oh. Yeah, we don't need to, we don't need to see know, that. Like, oh, no, every time. Nobody oh. is here is interested in that garbage. <laughs> We're crafters. Thank you for telling us. Yes, thank you. And I but hope I they don't do it again. Did you block me? Yeah, I blocked. Okay, so we'll probably just come back and run it. But yeah, I think I'm done now. I think I'm going to let this dry. And then I will go get some copper gilder spaces if I have any. If I don't, I have some other things that would probably serve. And then when I am able to, then um, 
must dry. I'll try to put a little bit on there before I seal it. So that's all good. So pretty, Jan said. Yeah, thank you, Jan. I didn't know if you were still here or not. Anyway, so this is gonna be. I think this is gonna make a really nice necklace. Let me see if I can get it a little bit closer, maybe. Can you zoom down there? Yeah, I can. So they can see it a lot better, maybe. You see, guys? It's just kind of a, it's a unique look, I think. This is not something you're going to see coming and going, you know? So, anyway. I think you can always make earrings, too, out of one side. Oh, yeah, yeah, earring drops and stuff like that. Yeah, and with the bone beads around ones, you could make a bracelet, you know, rosary stone bracelet. That would be very pretty. Like these that. are Ooh. too long, though. It's like when you use these big, long beads, mm -hmm. you have to use them toward the front. Once it gets up toward your neck, it doesn't lay right. It's not going to work for you at all. So... Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm good with it. So now, what did I do? I put some swelligan out. This is going to be dry. I'm going to move this stuff back. Um, Dara said, what is your formula for tea dyeing the bone beads? I make the tea, I just make the tea super strong. I take like three or four tea bags, and um, I get a really, really big coffee mug. I have this coffee mug that says, uh, I don't need Google. My husband knows everything. <laughs> Anyway, so I use that. I put all my beads down in that along with uh, like three or four tea bags and water to cover everything. And I, oops, and I'm, so I'm just brushing this on with this. In case you guys wonder what I'm doing. I'm, I'm sealing it. This is a sponge. Um, I might need more. But anyway, so I put it in there. I put it in the microwave for about three minutes and get it warm so it really starts to activate it you know and um yeah now i leave it sit you know for like a day i don't move it i just leave it sit and then then i'll take them out and then i'll rinse them you know and i'll lay them out and dry them and that and i like to look back through them and see how they came out you know i'm gonna have to do this again because I didn't get them all turned right, but you know, that's basically all it is. You know, I'd use this sponge brush, I might not have been too smart because these will soak up a lot and a regular brush wouldn't have and I would have had more control. So I would say don't do this, you know, because it, it'll, it'll, waste, it'll waste material for you. But I'll go ahead and finish it off now since it's here, the last little bit. Yeah, you want to get it sealed nice because, you know, you wouldn't want any of this color coming off on somebody, you know. So you got to get it sealed. But like I say, too, another way to do it is, you know, your Krylon. You could do that. Do the Krylon thing. And then you can, you know, take it outside and hang it. You know, if you, if you have a place to do that. Or inside and hang it. Wherever you have a place where you can hang it somewhere so that... It's not touching anything so that, you know, it could get around to the back and everywhere like that. And then I'll be nicely sealed for you and for your customers. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you very much. But that's how I do it, Dara. That's kind of how you do your Kool-Aid thing, isn't it? You put your beads down into the Kool-Aid, you make the Kool-Aid and you just let them sit. I don't know if you heat it up or not. I found that heating it up um, kind of um, activates it somehow. So I, you know, at a distance, when I look at this 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 one with the bone beads, kind of makes me think of a distance, like um, a little bit of the paper beads. Kind of mm -hmm. looks like till you get up on it, then you know it's not. But anyway, so that's kind of what I had for you today. And I was going to tell you too. I don't know if anybody's interested, but I am prepared to make. 10 kits for all the stuff that you need to do this okay um so they're on the website in uh, the muses and classes section and what you get is you get a full thing of swell again here like this you're going to get a full thing of the stampendus 
embossing ink you're going to get some perfect pearls you're going to get a full can of gilder's paste the colors i choose are random but there'll be something that, that makes sense don't worry about that so you're going to get that and uh, you get some bone beads you're going to get metal beads you're going to get um a, bone beads metal beads and uh, something else oh some boho wood beads which we didn't do anything with but they will work really good too there's a whole bunch of stuff. Crowley works fast. Oh, we'll have to try it. Yeah. Um, but you get all this stuff. It's like a seventy-five dollar value. You're getting full size, you know, product. You're gonna get a little thing of perfect pearls too. Um, everything you need to do it. You need to sit down and do it. You know. So, and the reason I'm putting this in is because um, you need this if you want to just dust it with perfect pearls, which we did not do. But if you're gonna do that, you need this. Okay, so if anyone wants that, it's a $75 value. We have them at the website for $45. And uh, then you pay shipping too. But that's a very good value. If anybody wants them, I have the stuff all lined up here to make them. Just go ahead and go to the site and you can purchase it. You cannot use it with a coupon though. So if you're making a cart and you're wanting to use a coupon, do not put it in that cart, put it in another cart. Jordy will adjust the shipping for you if, um, you know, need be. For which one? Um, if they buy, like, this kit, you know, you can't use a coupon, so you got to buy it by itself. Or buy it with other things you're not using a coupon for. You could do that. Um, but if you put it in the cart and yeah, you use you a coupon, put, you can... we have to bill you back for what it discounted you on the kit. So anyway, but I think you blocked it out. Anyway. Yeah, I blocked it out. Oh, so you don't have so to worry can, about it. They that. don't have to worry yeah, about it. Don't worry about it. I'm just talking. Just just scratch all that. Don't worry about it. You're good. So Michelle, she watched the beginning. Love the cornucopia. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. And um, it was so nice to be with you today. It's time to go. At least we didn't run you over as long as we did last week. Last week we were here an hour and a half. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, we're, we're out of here now. I'm going to go make my supper, and Javi has to do a couple things, and she's going home with Rob. So that's it for today. You guys have a wonderful weekend. I'll be around. If you have any questions about the class or the kid or anything, you can call me too if you want. The number's right on the website at the bottom of the home page. So anyway, so have a great weekend, and we will catch you next week somehow. I'm not entirely sure. Rob and Javi have... A wedding to do next Friday so uh, we'll probably have a produced video if we have a video okay and it'll come out you know around the same time but it'll be produced it won't be live and then we'll get back to our regular schedule after that all right okay take care guys bye bye, bye. you guys are great bye bye